Good morning. It is September 13th, 2024. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You've tuned in to Matt and Ray Indy in the morning. We're here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That's where a true victory is found. When you know you are in right relationship with God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and you understand how much He loves you, and you know that all those things that you did wrong, all those mess-ups, those wrong thoughts, can be forgiven, not hold against you anymore. It doesn't matter what others remember. God says when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, and you repent of those sins, you turn away from those sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. He cleanses us. Now, like I say sometimes, the Lord will come, He'll pick you up, He'll clean you up, so that one day He can take you up. One day we'll find and understand all the things that God has been preparing for those that love Him, those that are called according to His purpose. And if you're listening to this devotion this morning, it means God is calling you to Himself. He wants that relationship with you. Don't push God away. Ask Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life. If you've not done that yet, don't wait another day. There's no promise that you even have the next minute. At any moment, it could be your time to be before God. So, don't wait. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Father said, or it says in the word, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We've all been created to live forever. Where that happens is dependent on who we decide to serve. Whether we see, or to serve Satan, the, the prince of the air, the ruler of this world, temporarily only, or Jesus Christ, the one who was in the beginning. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The one who paid the ultimate sacrifice for your sins so that you could be reconciled to God Almighty and one day walk in glory and enjoy all the blessings that he has for us. This world here is just a short little tiny time. Don't mess up on your choice, on your decisions, by choosing a little slight pleasure for the moment and damnation forever. Choose life. Choose Jesus. He chose you. Now it's up to you to accept Him. So here we go. Yesterday... I left off in Luke chapter 6 and I said I wanted to pick up um, if the Lord led to continue and I gave the verses that we were going to be doing today I am going to read through those verses we as children of God need to live our lives in a way that honors God if we say we love him then we'll keep his commandments if we say we love him we're going to live our life in a way that brings honor to him you know, when you love your parents and you want to honor them, you, you do things that will make them happy. The thing about God is that the things that He requires of us is so that we can actually have a better life. Not be in the bondage of Satan. I heard Alistair Begg say the words of a, a short song. It's a kid's song, and he said he learned it when he was younger. He, he knew the, these words. But listen to what it says. It says, I met Jesus at the crossroads where the two ways meet. Satan, too, was standing there. And he said, come this way, lots and lots of pleasures I will give you today. But I said, no. There's Jesus here. See what he offers me? Down here my sins are forgiven. 
up there a home in heaven. Praise God, that's the way for me. We need to choose life. I also read another little thing on someone, and I had never thought these words this way. Uh, let me see where I have it here. Adam and Eve were the only ones given the choice to stay the course or choose death. It took me a while to say, what does he mean? To stay the course or choose death? It's because Adam and Lee, Eve didn't have sin. But when Satan brought the temptation, they made the choice to choose death instead of life. And since then, that sin nature is in all of us. But Jesus, he goes on and he says, everyone who came after them, after them is given the choice to stay the course. Which remember, we have that sin nature, so we are now have that death in us, or choose life. Exactly how a person will gain life has changed through God's history. Thanks to Jesus Christ, our choice is so simple and beautiful. It's hard to imagine. Thanks be to God. See, the thief only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief, the adversary Satan, has been around a long, long time. He has a huge head start on all learning schemes and strategies to keep people from accepting life through Christ Jesus. He will spin lies to lure people into his traps and keep them from getting to Jesus for their entire lives if possible. God Almighty has been around a lot longer than Satan. God knows how Satan works. God sent Jesus to destroy the works of Satan. We are wise to learn how God works through Jesus to destroy Satan's works and bring us from death to life. He says, and that's what this song is about. Jesus came that we might have life. Satan just steals, kills, and destroys. Jesus calls everyone to follow him. Satan calls everyone to follow him. We get to choose who we follow. 1 John 1 through 5 says, This is the message which we heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. James 1.21 Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. See, it's in Christ. It is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is found in Christ, through Christ. The price has been paid for the forgiveness of our sins. We should live our lives in a way that honors Him. I'm going to try real quick to finish this. Romans 12, 2. For I say, through grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them 
if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortion, exhortation, excuse me, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. It's not easy to go through tribulation, hard times, but be patient. Trust the Lord. Know that there is no one higher than your God. And he says, all things work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Somehow, all those troubles, all those things together, he'll use them to strengthen you, to polish you. I talked about some of us may be diamonds in the rough. But all those things that come our way, God will use those to help us. Because he is preparing us for eternity. Things here, yes, we've got problems in this world. But we look forward to the promises of what God is preparing for us in glory. He says, continuing steadfastly in prayer. You know, that prayer that is communication between you and God, not a repetitious prayer that you're just so used to saying it all the time. You just, it just comes out, just words. No, but that prayer that's from the heart, you talking to your heavenly father in the name of Jesus, being led by the spirit of God within you, by the desires that he has put in your heart, by those burdens for lost souls that he puts in your heart, for your family members. Let the Spirit of the Lord lead you. Continue in prayer. Steadfastly. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things but associate with the humble. In other words, don't only try to be with all those higher class, important people. Matthew calls it the Oprah Winfrey uh, syndrome, where you try to find the most popular person in the room and attach yourself to that person because you feel like it's going to elevate you and they're going to see you as important because you are with this important person. Oh, no. you know, Jesus is the most important your relationship with God. That's the relationship you should be concerned about. That's who people should know that you hang out with. It should be obvious in your life that you have a connection with God Almighty. That He is your best friend. That you have God Almighty as your Heavenly Father. Wow! <laughs> you can't get better than that as far as a friend. Continues, says, do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Proverbs 4.23 Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. So keep that praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow morning.